Hello makers, welcome to Sheer Stitchery. I'm Katherine Harris. And if you're new here, I do sewing and DIY tutorials each week. So smash that subscribe button down below. This week, we are going to make a sunglasses case or what I like to call a sunnies case. I have a free downloadable PDF pattern for you to grab and follow along. So let's get to it. Now, before we get stitching, a word from our sponsors. Now, this video was sponsored by TIJN Eyewear, and it actually inspired this make today. And what they provide is eyeglasses as well as sunglasses. And I don't typically typically partner with brands too lightly, especially when they don't have much to do with sewing. That being said, I was really impressed with the sustainability factors that are factored into this company's practices as well as when they're manufacturing the eyeglasses, as well as trying to ensure that they are cost effective so that everyone can have stylish eyewear. And couple that with the fact that my daughter recently broke her glasses. So I thought I would love to test them out. So I first wanted to chat with you about my daughter's glasses. So hers are prescription glasses. And the optometrist had told me that she is considered legally blind without her glasses. So her prescription is a very large prescription and rather than being nearsighted, she's actually farsighted. So it is a complicated prescription to make. And in fact, we have had a lot of different glasses companies, both local companies that you go into the shops, such as lens crafters, as well as online versions that have essentially just not been able to do her prescription or in the case of when we went to Costco, they broke the lenses so many times that they refunded us our money because they just couldn't make them. And at Zenny Optical, they were able to make them, but she couldn't choose whatever frame she wanted to choose. She was actually given the option of choosing from three different frames out of the thousands that they have. So she was really limited in terms of her style. But when this company approached me and we were given the opportunity to choose any style of glasses, she really was able to choose any style of glasses. So if you have a complicated prescription, I would highly recommend looking into this because they were able to cut her lenses in a metal and acetate frame, which she has never been able to have before just because of the thickness of her lenses and they fit in perfectly. They do not pop out. They are incredibly durable. And she is that kid that will get them scratched, get them knocked off her face and broken. We are buying glasses about every six months. The nice thing about having a combination of metal and acetate in this frame as well is the fact that it is flexible. So this is absolutely perfect for her. Shay, how are you liking your glasses? Well, I quite enjoy my glasses. They're very, I've noticed, strong and durable. Like, they don't scratch when I drop them. I've dropped them twice. And I really think we should have done this video before I let you wear them for a little while. <laughs> I'm glad they're in good scratch. condition. They didn't scratch. They're very flexible. Um, I may have slightly sat on them, but that's okay. And, and they're still kicking. Still beautiful, still gorgeous. As I had mentioned before, Shay is very hard on her glasses. So these get a durability rating of like, what would you give it? How many stars? Like 12 out of 10. 12 out of 10 stars <laughs> for durability from the child who about every three to six months we have to buy new glasses. Yes. So <laughs> my last pair was literally like falling apart. Maybe we'll show some clips of that. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Now I decided to grab a couple of pairs of glasses for myself. I grabbed two pairs of anti-fog glasses that actually have blue light filters in them. I spend a lot of time on my computer editing videos and doing other work. And this is something that is incredibly important to me to help stop with eye fatigue. That being said, I was really interested in wanting to test out the anti-fog version. So I've got a little test for you right here where you can see how the glasses are fogging and not fogging based on that. 
I also wanted to use these glasses for sewing in particular because you need safety glasses whenever you're working with things like metal boning and you're getting very close as you're stitching to that metal boning and I do a lot of dresses and a lot of the dresses I do I like to add in a steel boning as opposed to the nylon boning just because it is more durable and you need safety glasses and I was using my good old trusty super scratched glasses that I had back in the lab in university and these ones are so much more stylish. Now they're not particularly safety glasses per se but they do protect my eyes if I were to break a needle and I hit that metal boning it's going to protect my eyes quite nicely. And last but not least, I ordered a pair of sunglasses, which I absolutely love. They are this beautiful tortoise print color in a light tan and brown, and they are scratch resistant. They are 100% UV resistant, uh, UV 400 and UV 400, and they have polarized lenses to help prevent eye fatigue. Now, I don't use glasses for myself. I actually had laser surgery many years ago and I find that my eyes are very photosensitive. So any kind of bright light or sunshine really does make my eyes water. So always having a good pair of sunglasses on hand are a big plus for me. I really like that these sunglasses are nice and lightweight as well as scratch resistant and fairly durable so that I can take them in my beach bag and head on off to the beach and enjoy it. So with that said, now let's get to sewing. Step one, prepare the fabric. So to prepare the fabric, the first thing that we're going to do on the wrong side of both the exterior and the lining pieces are to transfer the markings, both the hash markings on either side and the markings for our snaps. Now, you don't necessarily need to mark the markings for the snaps at this point because we can do that in a later step, but I just like to have them handy. So once we've done that, we're going to use Pelon 987F, which is also known as fusible fleece. Now with this fusible fleece, you are going to fuse it to the wrong side of the exterior fabric. If you don't have fusible fleece, you could always use quilt batting as well and some 505 spray. Now you want to make sure it's in the center and you should have a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance around the entire exterior. Step two, the clasp, if you're doing magnetic prongs or Velcro. So if you're using the snaps, you'll attach that at the very end. If you're doing the magnetic prongs, you are going to want to do this. So on the exterior side, you're going to take your template and mark the one for the female tab. And you're going to place that on your fabric. And then you're going to line up where your prongs are and mark that with an air soluble marker. Fold your fabric in half and then cut two very small slits. You don't want them to be too big. You just want them large enough that you can poke those prongs through. Then you're going to poke those prongs through and you're going to place that with the prongs pointed out and the female clasp on the bottom with the wings on the exterior. Next up on your lining fabric, you are going to use a medium weight fusible woven interfacing and just press that in place to stabilize this. Then you're going to use your template and mark on the bottom curved edge the mark for the male snap. Now the male slap is, snap is installed the exact same way as you did the one on the exterior. You're just going to mark the two prongs, fold the fabric in half and cut two little slits with your scissors going through all the layers here and then placing your prong in place. Now, if you're using Velcro, instead of placing the snaps, you're just going to put Velcro on there and just sew them through all of the layers. Now for step three is to sew the top flap and the bottom. So you're going to place your lining and exterior right sides together. And then I am just marking those hash marks on the interfaced side here, just so I can see them a little bit better. Then I'm going on the right side and I'm creating those hash marks on the right side, extending past that 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, because once it's stitched together, we will want to see it where those hash marks are. Then you're going to go around with clips or pins and pin all around the perimeter of your Sunny's case. And 
just make sure that everything is lining up nicely. Next, you're going to be taking Pelon 72F, which is a fusible heavyweight interfacing as a bag stabilizer, and we're going to be inserting it in. Now, when we do that, we need to have an opening that's large enough to fit this large piece in. So when you roll it up, you're going to need a piece about yay wide. So I'm just drawing some arrows on where I am going to start stitching and stop stitching. So you're going to stitch all the way around the perimeter of this Sunny's case, going all the way around, leaving that gap on just one of the sides. That way we can fit this in. So I have decided to start a little bit above where I had drawn where we're going to start. So just above where the flaps begin and you're going to use a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and you're just going to stitch going all the way around your Sunny's case. And when you're stitching, just be very careful when you're going over any of the areas that have any hardware. And when you're stitching, you know you'll have the right seam allowance because you will not be stitching into the fusible fleece at all. Then extend slightly past that hash mark where the flap is going to be. So you can see it's extended slightly past where I've got that mark and we've started just above where that other mark is. Next, we are going to clip this. Now, clipping through all of the layers, we are going to clip at the start and stop of where we have left our gap, and we're going to clip just up to the stitching line, but not into the stitching line. So where we have our gap, it should be the full seam allowance. Next, we are going to grade the seam allowances along all the stitched ends, starting with the interfacing layer, and we're going to clip that very closely to the seam line above about 1 16th of an inch or 1 8th of an inch away from that seam line. And duckbill scissors really come in handy here. And then you are going to grade the exterior fabric to about a quarter of an inch away. Now you want to leave the full seam allowance along that gap area where we left that notch. That's very important. Next, you're going to clip all of the curves, create some notches on the convex curves and clip any of the corners. Then we are going to flip this right side out. And once we have it pushed out, you're just going to use your fingers to really get in the corners. And then I'm using a point turner to really get my corners to point nicely and to really just press everything where it needs to be. Step four, the case stiffener. So now we're going to add the case stiffener. So we're going to start with the flap and we're going to place that in. And obviously you're going to point the rounded edge towards the rounded bit. And then we are going to stitch in here. And when we stitch, you have the two hash marks that we transferred to the right side. You're going to take a clear ruler and you're just going to draw along there with an air soluble marker and then that becomes your stitching line. So you're just going to stitch along here and don't forget to backstitch at both the start and the end and this will seal the stiffener in that top flap piece and also give an area for your flap to turn nicely as opposed to having it all one piece. Then you will have your opening where you can put your larger flap in and you're just going to roll that up and then place it inside. Now it can be a bit tricky because that fusible fleece will really stick to the double-sided adhesive that is on this interfacing. So just really try to flatten it out nicely. And if you're using a non-adhesible version and just a bag stiffener, that will work as well. But I do really suggest the double adhesive heavyweight interfacing because you can fuse it in place which is what we are doing right here. So you're just going to fold under the edges where your gap is, and you're just going to fuse that stabilizer in place. Next, we're going to stitch around the entire perimeter of our case, top stitching quite close to the edge, as well as sealing up the gap that we have. Step five is forming the case. So you are going to place right sides together. So your exterior fabric should be right sides together. And we're going to match the point up to the edge of where that stitching line is, where we created the flap. And then we're just going to stitch along either side. And then you're going to do a second row of stitches on the inside of that, just for extra security. Flip it right side out, and then it can start to form that case shape. 
Now, the next thing that you're going to do is form the shape. So you're just going to press the sides in as you fold them in and use a bit of steam. Now, I find that this interfacing works really well with taking that shape. And so as you're pressing the seams inwards, it really helps to form the shape of the case. And last but not least, you just need to press the top flap now i hope you enjoyed this video and so along and if you have any questions on making your own sunglasses case or on the glasses do let me know until next time makers let's get our sospiration on Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god, okay. Okay, wait, we're gonna act like this is like a Vogue interview. Please don't die. Okay, okay. ready? So, Shay. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, it's out! <laughs> okay. So, Shay, what do you think of the glasses? Well, I quite adore them. They are very flexible. They look lovely and they're anti scratch, everything like that. <laughs> Your <laughs> accent changes! <laughs> <laughs> we should talk like reporters. Yes, they are very anti-scratch and <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> breaking news. <laughs>